name is Jan Boestander. I am born and raised in this beautiful Karoo village of Merveville. Because the circumstances were difficult here, I had to move to Stellenbosch. I did building work and then I got a permanent work at Stellenbosch municipality and I was appointed in the infrastructure the road department where we build roads. After a couple of years, I came back to Merveville to come and look after my family. And here in Merveville, it's like a privilege that the experience and the skills that I learned while I was young, especially this, this um, construction work and building work, now I'm applying it to our community so that our community can benefit. I'm using the knowledge that I have to make sure that I, that I support and help our people. I'm an office bearer, a committee member of the Merveville Advice and Development Office. Every day in the morning I come to the office, do some administrative work and I'm also working and assisting the people that are working there and creating the, the food garden. This office, Madou, it's like um, a beacon of hope for Merveville. Many of the communities in Merveville, they are relying on the office for information, for support and the help. Through the European Union, which is also supporting SCAD with the funding, we can be of much help to our community and address some of the challenges that they experience. We are involved in the impacts of climate change here in Merveville. We need water most on the, on the garden. So as part of the water, we need the dams. So Mr. John and Zira is here to come and teach and guide us, um, the community. We are um, elderly people, we've got women, we've got the young people who are currently involved there on the, on the garden. Um, what John is now teaching us how to build a feral tank. Here we are teaching farmers, communities, how to build a ferro tank. A ferro tank is a, a tank that is built with wire. Ferro means wire, it's a French word. And then use cement, and then use water, use river sand and some stones. But this tank, it's ideal to build in the dry areas, communities, uh, where there is no enough water and where there is enough water, but where you want to store water. The tank is for storing water, rainwater. It can be rainwater, it can be municipal water that you can store in there. The steps to build this tank is to first check the environment where you are going to build the tank. Within the environment, we are going to look at the slope, the landscape. We are going to look at the uh, type of soil. You are going to look at the amount of water you are going to feed in there and the people who are going to use the water. And when you put that together, then you decide the size of, of the water tank you want to build. So you build the tank by putting, first clear the ground, build a foundation. Make sure that when you clear the ground, the soil is harder. And then you build the foundation. Yeah, and then make sure that when you build the foundation, it has to be level. You have to use spirit level to make sure that it's not sloping one side so that the water cannot disturb the tank. After digging, then you put stones. The stones, when you are laying them down, make sure that they are not close together. They have a space where when you put the concrete, the mixture of stones, river sand and water and cement, it's going in between the rocks. And then further, you make sure that you level again the the concrete, after leveling the concrete, you put a, a layer of wire. And then within that layer of wire, you join the outlet pipes. The outlet pipes, they help to clean the water and also when you want to use the water for your garden. Then you put another layer of concrete to cover the, the wire and to cover the pipe. Thereafter, then you, build, you, you bring in a reinforcement wire to form a foam that is related to the shape of the foundation. So in this case, we have a circular tank. So you bring the wire, the reinforcement wire, to make sure that it's sitting around the, the foundation. After putting the reinforcement wire, you put bed mesh or chicken mesh to cover uh, the, uh, the reinforcement wire. The chicken mesh is put to make sure that when you plaster, it holds the mortar. 
because the reinforcement wire cannot hold the motor on its own. So the chicken mesh helped to hold the motor. After putting the frame together, then you mix the motor. Uh, one is to three. One bag of cement to three river sand. You take the, uh, the, the mixture, you plaster on the, on the wire. As you plaster on the wire, the, the motor will go through to through the wire to inside. So usually we have to have someone holding the, uh, the motor so that it cannot just go out. You plaster in a way that you stagger the plastering throughout the border of the, the tank. This helps to make other parts stronger or having motor so that when you plaster the second time covering the fence, the motor, the older motor, it's holding the other motor. Because the new motor, if it sits, sometimes it tries to fall. But because you have the older motor there, then it can hold it uh, tight together. So that's you plaster. Then when you plaster, you finish the first layer. Uh, then you plaster inside, that's the second layer. Inside, the main focus is to cover the wire the fence, the reinforcement wire that is inside and covering the poles. And as you plaster, the, the motor comes out to the outside of the tank uh, through the spores that you leave around to make a bondage between the old plaster outside and the new plaster that is done inside. And then it makes the tank uh, stronger, the first and the second plaster. Then once you have done that, you leave it for a few hours, uh, maybe four hours or overnight. Then the following morning, it's easy plastering. Just plastering like plastering a house, outside, inside, until you have a five centimeter thick wall. Then it's enough, it's strong to hold the water. This tank, it helps uh, in a way of uh, transforming the communities because of uh, the, we, we have uh, and predicted rain patterns because of the climate change, because of dryness. So it is important to build this tank so that people can save the water. Any drop of water you receive is directed and saved into the tank for future use. So if the communities are building this, they cannot rely only from municipality, which sometimes doesn't supply enough water for the community. Um, further, this, uh, this tank, it is important to build it in the rain season because it needs water itself on the body as you build the structure of it. It needs enough water to make it stronger. So it's better when you are building it like here. We had the opportunity that we had some rain and that helps the tank to be stronger if we have a bit of rain in there. And also just after building it, you need to fill it with water. So water should be very much available to make sure that the water. After filling it up, then you can start using the water. Because now we have this water tank and you can see it's a bare ground. The future is to make sure that this area is green. So it will help to provide food for the communities. When this water tank is completed, so water, water is used to produce enough diverse food for the community who are living here. So from a desert, we are creating a paradise through the feral water tank system to supply into the food production system. We believe we are already busy uplifting the community and it's only a matter of time then people will experience and see that we are the real beacon of hope in this desert of the Karua.